March 21st, 11.34am, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard as our client. And we know that he didn't do it, which is very important. So, so now what should we do? Well, the trial is tomorrow, and we only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On Guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. Let's go. March 21st, detention center, visitor's room. Ah, the lawyer dude. So what did you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, alright? That's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Mr. Corridor was already dead at that time? Yeah, that's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. That's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me, and then, out of the blue, the dude arrested me. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Corridor, what sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, you can't even tell he's the same age as me. And he wants to try to make a jammin' ninja movie, even though we all know it'd fail. The Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? Dude, you think you'd be the other way around, you know? Okay, let's get some clues. <sighs> March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without... Good morning. Hold on, it's you! What is going on around here? Uh, uh, um... I heard poor Juan was killed, is that true? It's a bad return is what this is. It's a bad rerun is what this is. Another steel samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know I was a huge fan of Juan's. Why, oh why, do all the stars interested in drop one by one like flies? It's always been that way since I was a little girl in elementary school. The class hamster was finally my turn to clean the cage and then, uh, oh my god. I was going to say with taunt. Um, actually, I wanted to ask about the murder and what happened. Why does she talk so fast? <laughs> Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? I, um, I couldn't hear everything she said, because she was talking too fast. Miss Oldbad, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky head, smarty pants. rat a tap 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 Okay, I don't want to talk to you, so I'm just gonna go this way. <laughs> March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. The hotel staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, gotta roll up the sleeves and try, I guess. Hallway. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Hallway. Hey, you're here! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lord of. Hey! Mr. Carpfeller, the thief showed his face! What? Arrest him, put him on trial, find him guilty, give him the death penalty! What's wrong, Lotta? Are you feeling alright? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here! So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera! C-A-M-E-R-A! My lifeblood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Y your camera? Look, 
don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here you are. Yep, here I am, faced with a lot of trouble. Huh? Yeah, so Lotta's camera was stolen. Uh, that is an important piece of information, although we didn't steal it, of course. <laughs> so you lost your camera? Ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's sixteen, $1,600 brand new. Huh? Can you just say you bought it for $700? I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. About five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bitty scratch on it. The manager got all huffed up in the face. He gave me his talking to and was real mean about it too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night, after the murder happened. Must have been when I was busy running around looking into things. That's when I lost sight of my dear, darling, expensive sweetie. Lotta, uh, what did you capture with that expensive camera of yours? I don't rightly know. I stopped the shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. Besides, I couldn't get anything for my big scoop. I wonder if Lotta's missing camera is even connected to the murder. It is. <laughs> What is camera added to the court record? What a, please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time Mr. Angar was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure you went to school, city boy? We have a lot of hard goals, there's a story to be found. A big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm gonna be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Reckon course that means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. I wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, maybe I wasn't here the entire time? Lotta, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture of your big scoop? Well, maybe I was, but that's what real journalists do. I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for proof? What kind of story was it that you would hang around here? Oh, <gasps> a psychic Two, in fact. Oops, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secrets, you know? Not again. Why does everyone have something to hide? I don't rightly know, Phoenix. <laughs> We've been stopped, haven't we? Uh, yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lotta and your I rule smile. Okay, we're gonna need to get some more evidence to break that, so we're gonna have a look around. Uh, we can go to Ongard's hotel room and Corridor's hotel room, both of which are important locations. Uh, let's go to Corridor's first, because that is the scene of the murder. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Corridor's Hotel Room. Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Corridor's hotel room, pearls. Mr. Corridor? The victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. Oh, it's you. So, what's happened? Kidnapper, has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't, he probably won't until we were Mr. On Guard's acquittal. Uh, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? Even if you want to look around the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know. But you've got to keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you! Haha, <laughs> wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map! That's great, pearls. Um, but Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Hotel guide map added to the court record.
I mean, it's only got a few words on it, but I guess she just hasn't really learned to read properly yet because she's a tiny little kid. That's okay. Love you, pearls. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but... One look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal. That's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death? They're looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yep. And it looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. Ongard's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Quite photo away to the court record. Why was Mr. Ongard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? It looks like the victim, Joanne Corridor, really put up a big fight. Yeah, one look at the crime scene, you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight, his button came off. The strong guard said something about a button. Something like, one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in his Kakama? That's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who is it? That lady, Ms. Olbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off? As in? As in, that's for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Let's go have a look. I guess the Vic was found on this side of the room. Uh, I think in this chair, maybe? I think so. Uh, so we can see there's a guitar case over here, with no guitar. It is however important, so we'll have a look at it. This is... a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but still usable. That's strange, the guitar is not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? But Mystic Maya... She said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on the top of the lid. Yeah, there's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? Guitar case added to the court record. Okay, so that's one of the things we need to worry about. We also want to know about this glass here. Because you can see all this stuff scattered all over the floor, but this glass is pristine. Which is weird. It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. Doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right, the flower vase was broken and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still alright? Wine glass added to the court record. Uh, I believe those are the things we had to look at. Uh, there's nothing on this side of the room. At least, nothing we can find at the moment. Um, I think that's everything. I think I want to show that stuff that we just found to Detective Gumshoe, see what he thinks. So about this wine glass. Oh, so you noticed it, pal? So you noticed it, pal? The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually, Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yeah, Pearl's noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the running the 1,000 meter dash. Beep beep. Beep beep. Beep beep. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm, I've heard this sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? 
some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened What happened the last time. Not happened. Happened. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta make myself scarce. Later, pal. Yow. At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Bright. Ooh. Would it be too much to ask you to be nice to me for a change? So you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable of you. Ow! Hey, don't you dare run away. Run away. <laughs> run away, scruffy McTrenchcoat. Ah! I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Wah! Detective, come over here for a second. Yow, yow! <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. I feel better knowing at least you were man enough to face your punishment. The man enough, sorry. The. You're so scared, he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Bright. You. You have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? V what? <clears throat> Come, Scruffy. The investigation briefing is about to begin. Y yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow! What did she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I've got to get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department, alright? And if you can, try not to let Ms. Von Karma see you. There's what a lot does you down she has big hair. Let's go to On Guard's hotel room. <laughs> March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, On Guard's Hotel Room. Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt On Guard's dressing room. This is our client's room. May I help you with something? Um, uh, where? You're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, correct? I gathered as much. I also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um,. How did you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying that he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow. It's a simple deduction, really. The trial is tomorrow, and Mr. Ongard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here, one stop in your mad dash, to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. I don't have the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I am Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns. <laughs> uh, alright. She may be a small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. Okay, so this is Adrian Andrews. I love her. She's very gay. <laughs> and she's just, oh, she's just wonderful. Uh, we're gonna get to know her a lot better. She is quite important to this case, so... I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? Y yes that is correct. Then I will tell you. Before the award ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. Ongar. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. If you took a lot look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. I bet she's a lot of fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. And after the show ended, you came back to this room? No, I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh. Preparations for the post-ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post-ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. Ongard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Corridor. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? You really held strong through everything. 
yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as nails. Um, so, about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. Ongard and I are related, are you? S sorry. I have no idea how he could cho how he could chose you as his lawyer. <laughs> There's a typo. <laughs> Why does she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve your stress later, alright? I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. Ongard's manager. His manager. Speaking of managers, did the victim, Mr. Corridor, have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios, in that Worldwide Studios did not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like her to places like this, honestly. You're wrong! I... I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya! Pearls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you a juice later, alright? Mm. Okay, um... Yeah, Adrian may not seem super lovable just yet, but trust me. <laughs> I think we need to talk to Wendy. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Ah, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Are you connected to the murder? I mean, y you were here, but so was I, and I went home. Or which I mean, Phoenix. I mean, oh, I'm not part of this game. I'm just playing it. You know what I mean. <laughs> Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. Wasn't the Pink Princess the sequel to the Steel Samurai? Alright. I see. This time, there are three Samurai Brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in near Oldie Tokyo. A love why? I see. Wait. A love what? Oh, thanks, Phoenix. That's sort of my reaction as well. A love why. This girl, Sayo, works at a tea shop and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers gliding over this one girl? Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet, times three. Y yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um... Yes, Pa? W what happens next? I wanna know! Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8am. Wait, she falls in love every Sunday at 8am? That's a lot of falling in love. I'm gonna stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theatre starting this week! I can't believe she's really considering it. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja, like the Samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a big pop star anyway. Uh, what? He was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy could he sing! <laughs> With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, took the ancient world by storm. Uh, a ninja? With a bright red guitar? And then, the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Masola. Jammin vs. the Muromachi 5. Suddenly, our Wraith hero catches a not so jammin cold the night before Battle 3. Oh, that's too bad for him. Y yeah. This kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um. Yes, Pa? What happens next? I want to know! Jammin. the Jammin Ninja! Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Masola? Every Sunday at 8 am. Um. which show should I watch? Hmm. 
can't believe she's really considering it. Okay, yeah, we do have to talk to Wendy here. My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder. Only recently did I finally find a star that makes this heart go ba again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Always ends up kicking the bucket, sorry. Typo again. Um... I'd watch your words. No one's gonna get away from saying anything bad about my Juan. But I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? That irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is that manner of speaking supposed to be, and why did she never stop? Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. When I was a young maiden, I was so beautiful, even the flowers of the fields blush. Besides, the breast flowers were the size of a little poem and all. Pearls? Are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay, I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention? Youngins today. So I'm guessing this old bag heard everything from Lotta. I want to ask you about what happened around the time of the murder. I don't know anything about that. I was here getting ready. Getting ready? For what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. The mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. Ah, uh, I see. But. Hmm? But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. What? I saw the most important moment of the night. The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Really, kids today. Please tell me, what did you see? Four psyche locks. <laughs> the murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then what murder isn't? Please don't stray onto another tangent. Please. If you want to hear more, then show your respect and bring this lady a present. Okay, we already have the present, fortunately. Um, remember Franzi? Uh, oh, maybe we don't. I didn't think we already had it. Hang on, I might need to go grab it again. Or grab it for the first time, because I don't seem to have it. Um, Franzi threw a little piece of paper at us, and that's what we need. So, I think maybe we have to pick it up off the floor or something. Uh... Yeah, there it is. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Auto... autograph? The paper's got Mr. Corridor's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Ah, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says, To my dearest Wendy in more normal letters here? This sloppy, unreadable writing! It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone! I love you, Pearl. Hold on. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere before. Mr. Corridor's autograph added to the court record. Uh, I thought Franzi just gave it to us, but she actually threw it at us and it landed on the table, so now we have it. Anyway, uh, we have Mr. Corridor's autograph, and we're gonna give that to Ms. Oldbag as a present, because of course we are. What you witnessed. Alright, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But, oh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at you young'un's expense. I am a little devil, after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll give you what you want. It's the autograph. Watch closely. <laughs> That's... that's Schwann's autograph! Yes, it is. And... and it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um... My name is Wendy Oldbank, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy. 
but somehow I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, um, I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. They have it in exchange. Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. One's yellow bag, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest Juan. Yep, that's right. One piece of evidence breaks all the locks. <laughs> Autograph given to Wendy Dearest. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And... Did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for the part, that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow? This time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Ongard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Juan in. I just do. That yellow-bellied chicken. A yellow-bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ongard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Mr. Ongard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mm, Mr. Nick? Well, what is... What, what is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and what wild temptress mean? Ack! <laughs> um, how about we just listen to what Miss Olbach has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Olbach, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl into Juan on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Ms. Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Ongard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Uh, of course. A tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Olbag give information like that? And where did she get it? <laughs> I believe we don't have the info we need to find out where she got that yet. Uh, I know where she got it, but I don't think we can find out just yet. March 21st, Police Station, Criminal Affairs De Dept Department. Hmm, it doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Great, now even Pearls is calling him Scruffy. Thanks, Francisca. They said something about an investigation briefing earlier, right? Why don't we come back and try again later when they're done? Okay, uh, I guess that's all we can do, right, Mr. Nick? You already. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do next. TBH? Talk to you already? Yeah. Maybe I need to ask Flutter about a camera, because I think that might be relevant. I just bought that camera. Who did it? The thieving rascal. Please don't look straight at me while you're saying that. 
Why don't I find the bugger who went and did this? They're gonna pay with a bullet. If you do that, don't expect me to defend you. Okay, that wasn't anything. Uh, let's try presenting the Megatama here and see if we have what we need. Big scoop. Lotta, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop. What I want to know about are the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean, that there's my bread and butter. Alright then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm gonna say that you're looking into a scandal. Brr. Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Corridor and this person? Adrian Andrews. This woman. She's Adrian Andrews, Matter on Guard's manager. Mm. The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah, you gotta have that... That, what's it? New sauce. Um, you mean news source? That's it. So show me something that shows that Juan guy had something with Miss, a with, with Miss Andrews. Okay, we don't have any proof of that yet, so yeah, we can't do this just yet. I thought we might be able to, but not yet. Um, we need something else. I think maybe we can talk to... to say to delinquents like you. Uh, she's climbing up like the old clam she is. Please, anything will be helpful. Well then, how about I tell you my measurements? Uh, no, that's okay. Really. She really doesn't like you, does she, Mr. Nick? I know, I know. Um, have you asked her about Adrian? No. Same, same message. Um, that's my manager. Did you meet her? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Strong woman, right? And <laughs> she takes good care of me. She's such a mama's boy. Dude, like I told you, I don't know anything about that press conference. I leave that kind of stuff to my manager. This is hard when pulling bass from a bass from a river. Is that hard? I don't I don't know anything about fishing. Um, I'm not sure what I should be doing. Oh, I think I can maybe ask you about about the scandal. If I present Adrian, maybe. Hey, that's Ms. Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm. So Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. The, the gay ones? Lesbians? Mr. Powers likes lesbians? Alright. I mean, I like lesbians. But, but I am one, so... <laughs> what do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her know her, you know? There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, if you're interested, I'd be glad glad to share what I know. Glad to share. He's so happy, he looks like a lion that just found his next meal. Okay, so yeah, I believe we can get the um news source from uh from um Will here and then give it to Water. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Ah, so you are interested in it. I figured you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Uh, oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbag would read. 
All right, let's see here. German Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager of the stars, Ms. AA. Y you see now, don't you? What? You can stop hitting me be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corridor didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with initials AA... Adrian Andrews? Yes, exactly. This is big news. But seems kind of odd. That woman, Miss Andrews, together with the biggest rival of her client? Ah, oh, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy. Powers was just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Magazine clipping added to the court record. Okay, so we have the tabloid article we need now, which we can show to Lotta and break that psychic lock. I had completely forgotten about that part. <laughs> and I, knew, I knew we needed the article, I forgot where you got it from. I thought you got it from the um, criminal affairs department, actually, but you don't. Okay, we already saw this, so I'm just gonna fast forward. There we go. Take that! This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous? The mysterious yet beautiful manager of the stars, Ms. AA. Ah! Mr. Corridor didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. Ongard's manager, Adrian Andrews. She has the initials AA. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Mr. Corridor's door last night. Wah! <laughs> Luigi wah. Well, Luigi wah! <laughs> I'm gonna win. <laughs> you were looking into Mr. Corridor and Miss Andrew's affair, weren't you? You got it! I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting! There's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you just say? Her initials are AA, what kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna wanna see real proof. Well, at least I do. So that's what I was doing, getting photos. Oh! I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. Then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, Lotta. Nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But... The paper I wrote it on? My note to myself? It's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. I came for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Y yeah, I understand. It's enough to make y'all go bonkers, I tell ya. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I've got no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. But I think it's bold-faced, not bold-faced? Like, it's bold-faced, like, like, the lie isn't, isn't covered with hair. It doesn't have a, a beard protecting it or whatever. I don't know. Or it could be bold face, like, like, you know, you're looking confident on your face, but I don't know. <laughs> what is camera updated in the court record? Okay, so we needed that piece of evidence, because uh, now we know, basically we know where Wendy got the information from, uh, because it was in the camera. March 21st, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back! Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but we can't just roll over and die. We just stay positive. So what do you mean the evidence is that type? I 
can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm, that's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. Ongard. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai's special pants. Um, uh, and the second one is? The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprint on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You don't even have to ask, little missy, it's obvious. They're matter on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Ms. Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean, you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten, there's no turning it down. Trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Ongar come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. N no way! Um, I think we can ask him about some other stuff? We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal of Mr. Corridor? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. S suicide? Her name was Celeste Impact. And she was Juan Corridor's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Mr. Corridor's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about her, pal? We do. Celeste is very important. She was the victim's manager and was also Miss, M Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. You just said that. It's been two years since her suicide, and now those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence? But- Wah! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy. Viv the en- Viv- Viv the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. Y y you don't- you don't mean- I do. Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You're no longer needed. Goodbye. Th that's... Wait. Please wait, sir. If I don't get this month's pay, I'll stop. Quiet. If it weren't for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Who? Who? That voice... Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? But this person, this is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I gonna do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Y you. How dare you show your face to me without a shred of, sh a shred of shame upon it. You've soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail bet 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 between, between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Franziska. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow. In court. It will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. Hmm. Still the same wild mare she always was. 
I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick. I... I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild man hasn't given in yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head? A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? Do you think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish? It it'd have been better for everyone if you it it had been it 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 had been it should it ha, it'd have been better. It had been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. And let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say. Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. Looks like there is still a lot you've yet to learn. A lot I've like I've yet to learn? Me? I'm perfect. What are you talking about? <laughs> hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Okay. So Edgeworth can give us a bit more info about Celeste, which is very important. I have no interest in talking about useless evidence. I think he can. I wanted to ask about Celeste specifically rather than the tabloid. Put a little more thought into what you show me. Phoenix, right? Still as stuck up as ever. We're looking into leads, but we can only look into a few key players with our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our energy investigating this person. Why don't you just help me straight and say I don't have any info? Well, that, that was you, Edgeworth. Hmm, this woman is another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago, but she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Corridor's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Inpax died. But her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. But there is still one riddle we've yet, we've yet to solve. Typo. There's a lot of typos in this case. Jeez. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Miss Inpax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. A suicide note? But how do you know Miss Inpax had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence, however, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corridor himself. Th the victim? He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corridor hid his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. 
for now, I think you should look in, look this over. This is the suicide report, part one, anyway. Part one? Suicide report added to the court record. Okay, so we actually need part two as well. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all, the reports that have multiple parts, like that one. That is two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name... It's Adrian Andrews? Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She... She tried to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews? Dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews attempted suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impax. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she? Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Impax, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that? Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counselling sessions. She is someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's... that's the nature of her dependency on others? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behaviour to hold herself together. How terrible. Attempted suicide report added to the court record. So, yeah, um, Adrian was absolutely in love with Celeste. They don't say it outright, but it's a fact. They, they, they were in love, and it's really sad, and I mean, it's sad, but I love Adrian, and I will protect her, and I will keep her safe. Uh, I think we need to show the transceiver to Edgewood? No. I forget what we need to do now. Here we go. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, on guard's hotel room. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. It looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? That's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Well, following? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Beep beep. Beep beep. Beep beep. What is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fools every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for Detective Gumshoe now. Now, Zen. Let's stop wasting time.
Adrian Andrews. Andrews? Andrews. Y yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, Alright. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews. She seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Um, we haven't got anything else we can talk to her about. I don't want to ask her about Celeste, I don't want to hurt her, hurt her like, emotionally. Um, but I think I might need to. Maybe not though. Maybe that's all I needed to see. Can't remember. Um, Joey, do you know anything? <sighs> I've told you how many times now, I'm a journalist. I got so much info running laps in my head, I forget things here and there. Please don't get so worked up over this. Huh, I don't care if you beg me. Be extra tough on kids, that's this gal's motto on learning youngsters. Gross. I, I think maybe I need to ask her about about Celeste. I don't want to, but... Um, I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate trifling matters. It's a waste of time to show me things that are of no relevance to me. Wow, this is the first time I've been shut down this badly. Okay, so clearly she didn't actually look, because if she saw a picture of Celeste, she'd freak out, but... Um... I guess I don't need to show any of those things by looks things. Tabloid maybe? No. Uh, Juan? Did you know the victim, Mr. Corridor? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place after all. Did you know about his rival with the Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and again, time and time again, those two competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. I've got a hunch this woman knows more than she's letting on. She must know why jo Juan Corridor was killed. There we go. Do you have any ideas? As to? As to why Mr. Corridor was murdered. Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job. So, do you have any ideas? Uh-oh, spaghetti-o! Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a psychologue, Mr. Nick? Yes. There's going to be more and more of these lately. I think we already have the stuff we need to break this, so let's go! Motive for murder. Why was Juan Corridor murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. Omgar's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corridor. You were not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. You're not good at being intimate with another person? Somehow I highly doubt that. I think what you're supposed to do is present the tabloid. I, I, I wish I could present Celeste and say you were in love with her, but you, you can't. You can't, I'm pretty sure. You and Mr. Corridor had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article. 
If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into this story. Hmm, as to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on a good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. She's gay. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Corridor? As if, there, as if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Corridor for this person's sake? Now we can present Celeste. So, yeah, basically... Well, I'm just gonna keep going and you'll see. Yeah. Celeste Inpax, your mentor and lover. How do you know about Celeste? Miss Inpax, she committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corridor's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corridor so you could find out more about her suicide. Y you have a great imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckrake of a future with third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Was there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. It's the suicide note being hidden. Miss Impax's suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corridor. Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corridor. Uh, I've sat there quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor, however, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste Impact was someone very special to you. A wedding ring. God, I wish. No, it's this. Miss Andrews, you, you nearly went through with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Y yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie, facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. On whom you can depend. You would have said on whom, you didn't say on again. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. S stop! This is really, like... I don't want to use the word triggering because of inter internets, but honestly, we're probably triggering Miss Andrews right now. This is really, really bad. Really traumatic. <sighs> when Celeste passed away so suddenly like that... I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corridor of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. W what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Corridor dead. M me Miss Impacts was everything to you. Aww. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. 
I'm physically small. I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. Against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. How did Edgeworth know about it? I... I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corridor. Celeste. Without her. Without her, I became scared. Everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corridor to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tablet reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, wherever there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. If, if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favour to ask. My attempted suicide? I'd like you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. If, if people found out about my weakness, I, I would sooner choose to die than live. Uh, uh, Alright, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. I guess she's the overthinking type. She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Uh, all this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. I'm not remembering something clearly. Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, must be off. I'll leave Mr. Ongard in your capable hands. Okay, we're done with that. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, pearls. She looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no. I'm okay, really. I I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. So yeah, we get back to the office. March 21st, Wright & Co. Law Offices. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impact's suicide note? That's right, she was also the one that discovered the victim's body. Clever. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Ah, Mr. Nick the transceiver. Hello? Brighton Co. Law Offices. Mr. Attorney, you're answering a phone. M Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. Phew. Phew. Which is why, I suppose, she is absolutely famished. M what? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. Ask my... M Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis. Beep. Maya, Maya. Damn it, you cut me off. Miss Digmaya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. 
You're a hopeless one. Um, sorry, Ak? <laughs> Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. I think this is really clever that they're using the channeling to share messages with Maya who's been kidnapped. It's really clever. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. That kidnapper is wanting to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe, but Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called to me. I read the note she left. Then I grabbed as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like that. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper, what's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Date. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Time. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Location. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, definitely just say date unknown, time unknown, location unknown. I think the date would be known because it's the same day, but... Ugh, I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis. I wonder if you're with Nick right now. We're now playing as Maya, which is kind of cool. Um, doesn't happen very often. If I don't do something to the door first, I don't think I'll be moving anywhere. Drat, it's locked. Hmm, but this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero is used as a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Well, there's one down here. Huh? Someone dropped a card here. It kind of looks like a business card, but there's no name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Ah, that's it. This shell card. If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. Alright, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. Click. I did it. Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. To be continued. So that's the end of the investigation for the moment. Uh, pretty exciting. Next time, we'll be starting the trial. So, look forward to that. Uh, have uh, hype. Get, get some of the hype that you, you should have. <laughs>